Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. And today we're going to talk about something that's quite massive. Now, hopefully by the time this video is up, you guys would have already seen the review of this PC right beside me. Or rather, right behind me. This is the Cleopatra from Kingdom here in Singapore. And yes, it's a behemoth of a gaming PC. It's really awesome. If you've yet to see the video, check it out in the card up above. But well, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Instead, it's this. Which is, well, much more massive than the PC right behind me. This is the BenQ EW3080R. And well, let's talk about this monitor. This really massive ultra-wide monitor. This is an ultra-wide monitor, so you're getting a 21x9 aspect ratio as compared to the more traditional 16x9. Now there are pros and cons to either of them, disadvantages, advantages, differences, all that kind of stuff. We are not going to dive into that topic today. In fact, if you want to know more about that, there are tons of videos online, so you can research on them yourself. But if you'd like us to cover this topic, or if you'd like to know our thoughts on this topic, 21x9, 16x9, aspect ratios in general, yeah, let us know, shoot us a comment down below and we'll be sure to answer you. Or perhaps we'll do a video next time, who knows. But in any case, just know that this is a wider than usual aspect ratio that most of you are probably not accustomed to. I, would, I dare say that most of us are still using traditional 16x9. So just take into account that if you're looking at this monitor, you definitely need more physical space. It is quite large. In any case, let's talk more about this monitor and we start off with the design. Honestly, it's really simple and minimalistic. From afar, it just looks like a really standard monitor that wouldn't look out of place in an office. It's black for the most part, except for the bottom bezel and a pretty heavy duty stand which has that same bronze-like finish for the Y-wing structure. Overall, it's really well built, but make no mistake, it weighs in at about 13kg or roughly 29 pounds with the stand or just under 10 kilograms or about 22 pounds without the stand. So heavy in fact that attaching the stand to the monitor does require you to use four screws, unlike most other monitors which would have a far simpler latch mechanism. In any case, it's a simple and minimalistic design, and you would only really know that it's a BenQ monitor from the little logo right at the corner. Personally, I do quite like it. It's really clean, really minimal, just neat. There's even a cutout on the monitor stand behind to help you with cable management, so that's pretty nice. In terms of ports, you'll get two HDMI 2.0, a single DisplayPort 1.4, a USB-C which supports 60W charging, and two additional standard USB 3.0 ports downstream. But now let's talk about the display itself, this huge ultra-wide panel. It's 37.5 inches, IPS, 2300R curve, 3840 x 1600 resolution running at 60Hz, a typical brightness of 230 nits with a max brightness of 300 nits, 95% P3 color coverage with 10 bit and HDR10 support. This display is fantastic, really, and perhaps especially true if you're on the creative side of the industry, or even if you simply enjoy a really good IPS display. This takes many boxes, which of course includes that ultra wide experience. General usage for things like documents or web browsing, it was simply great. Multitasking is really nice, especially if you've used an ultra-wide monitor before, and not to mention that this is pretty high resolution, and you actually have plenty of physical space to work around. The best use of this monitor, however, is probably entertainment, which isn't too surprising considering that the EW3880R is supposed to be the flagship model for BenQ Entertainment series of monitors. Watching videos on YouTube, Netflix, tuning in to game streams, competitions, so on and so forth. This is where it excels, and it truly is pretty awesome. Now it goes without saying that most of the content you'll be watching would likely be only available in standard 16x9. That means you'll get pillar boxing. This is where you might find things to be a little distracting or not, especially if you're more sensitive to backlight bleed. Thankfully on our review unit, backlight bleed is rather minimal. But if you do get a film that's properly shot in cinematic widescreen, it will fill up the entire display. At that point, it truly is quite the experience and you'll certainly be making full use of this monitor. In fact, BenQ couples a few of their features into this monitor to really push the use case. BenQ's own HDRI technology is included with this monitor and you can toggle through the various modes via the button on the bottom right corner. 
Utilizing the ambient light sensor, it will automatically sense the surrounding light and adjust the brightness of the panel to increase the dynamic range and provide a better HDR experience. However, this is where you should be a little skeptical because this monitor isn't certified for anything above HDR10, which isn't too surprising considering the fact that the max brightness of this display is only about 300 nits. So this is a HDR experience provided by BenQ to achieve as close a semblance to a panel that can actually output the proper HDR. Now is it great? That depends. If you're comparing this to a HDR 1000 display or HDR 600 display, this is nowhere close. It definitely falls short. But if you're comparing to set, let's say a HDR 400 panel, that in a way it's quite similar. But again, HDR400 isn't that fantastic anyway, so it's alright. If you like it, you'll like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you need it, it's right there. But now let's talk about the other half of what makes a movie really enjoyable. Sound. Audio. This monitor has speakers built right in. In fact, it's a 2.1 channel speaker setup from Trovolo. And yes, you heard that right. 2.1 channel, which means this has a subwoofer built right in. And to cut straight to the point, the audio experience from this monitor with the built-in speakers alone was actually really surprising. The 2.1 channel speaker system combines two 3W speakers and an 8W subwoofer, totaling 14 watts of power. That might not sound like much, but if you've ever had the chance to try it out at a store or something, you might be surprised, especially for speakers that's built into a monitor, no less. Clarity of the audio is great, you won't have issues hearing vocals. But yet, there's also a substantial amount of thumpy mids and bass thanks to the 8 watt subwoofer. Of course, I wouldn't say that it is rumbling, but for a monitor to actually be able to feel the thump and low roar of the F-18 in Top Gun Maverick, or the various explosions and gunfire in a game like Halo Infinite, it is quite impressive, you've got to admit. It also gets plenty loud and has decent stereo separation, no less thanks to the physically larger display. In short, it was honestly quite a great experience and like I said, a pleasant surprise. If you're going for a really minimal and clean desk setup, you might not even need to consider getting dedicated speakers anymore, which would have taken up space and wiring, wires and all that stuff. So in fact, just this alone, you might be happy enough. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about gaming. Despite the high resolution, it is actually a tad shy of 4K Ultra HD which means it is actually easier to run games on this display compared to say a 27 inch 4K monitor. Needless to say, our rig right here is more than capable of handling the full resolution of this display at the highest possible settings no less. Everything looks great and despite the 4 millisecond response time on this IPS panel, games still feel pretty fluid and there's no sign of artifacts or ghosting. The only downside is the fact that you're limited to just 60Hz. If you're playing a game like Genshin Impact, where 60 frames per second is still the limit, the experience is totally fine, stellar even. But if you're more into games like CSGO, Apex Legends or Valorant, where every frame makes a difference, this will fall short. To sum it all up, we really like the BenQ EW3880R. We do think it's a fantastic monitor with a really great IPS display and a unique feature no less. The 2.1 channel sound system with that 8 watt subwoofer was honestly a pleasant surprise and it definitely performed above average. But ultimately, it all comes down to price and what you're looking for in a monitor. The BenQ EW3880R retails for about 1600 Singapore dollars or 1050 US dollars. That is quite a bit of cash for a 60Hz monitor no less. For the same amount of money, you can choose to drop a little on resolution and opt for the 34-inch high refresh rate Ultra offerings instead. Or you can fork out a couple hundred more and you can opt for the same 37.5 or 38-inch ultra wide but with nano IPS and high refresh rate no less. For both the other options however, you definitely do not get a 2.1 channel speaker setup. So pros and cons. Now personally, I'll probably go for a 34-inch ultrawide instead with a high refresh rate panel. But that's me. If you're someone who's looking for a larger than usual ultrawide panel with a good sound system no less, all for the sake of doing a really clean and minimal desk setup, this is it. This is probably the monitor that you should consider. The BenQ EW3880R definitely fits a really specific niche and that's what makes it really unique in this sea of never-ending monitors. So in that regard, like we've said time and time again, if you've yet to realize, we really do quite like this monitor. It's great. 
If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. If you'd like to, do check out the affiliate links in the description as well. If you do, thanks for the support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Till the next one. See ya! Thank <laughs> you.